Hello and welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you are so inclined. In today's video, we're taking a look at these, the DT990 Pros from Bear Dynamic. Now these things are 250 ohm, open back studio mastering beasts. But do they game? Let's take a look. So what do we get in the box of the DT990 Pros? Well, not a great deal, to be perfectly honest, but these are a pair of headphones and I've become accustomed to opening headsets that have lots of peripherals with them. But we'll start with this, the carry case. Now this thing offers absolutely zero protection. It's a very thin, water-resistant material. But what I do love about it is this very unique thing that you don't see nowadays, which just has a bit of paper for your name and address and email, so you can be doxxed immediately should somebody find it, which is all very lovely. We then get the obligatory user guide and the, the warranty information, which is very, very lovely, I'm sure. And we get the converter to the larger head, the phono head for the jack itself. Now, this does stand out to me as being slightly different. And the reason for this is because it doesn't simply slot on. You have to screw it. I like that. It means you can never lose this. Once you put this on, you should never really be losing that little bit. And I do like that. And it says it's gold plated and I'm sure that it is because it's golden colored, which is all very nice and apparently makes the audio far, far superior. Gold does help by the way. But either way, I like that. Not a great deal comes with this. That's all well and good. Why should it? It's just a pair of headphones, but I do like this little bit. I like that it screws on so I will never lose it. But there we are. Let's move on. Now in terms of the build quality and the design of the DT990 Pros, they're not dissimilar to that of the MMX300. However, the MMX300 did have gaming in mind, whereas this clearly does not. We'll start at the main point just for that. As you can see here, where the actual cable is to connect to the computer, there's no way of removing this. So getting a general sort of cheap replaceable mic that you can put in the usual jack is not necessarily a case with these things. You do require a mod mic or something along those lines. But let's just start at the top. We've got the usual headband that's all metal that comes down to these metal arms that hold the actual ear cup itself. Now surrounding the headband is this replaceable leather strap. Now this thing is absolutely fantastic. If you want to ever clean it or anything like that, you just take it off and wipe it down. It's nice and easy. And beneath it, as you can see, we do have the solid metal headband itself. Now the padding on this thing is not as generous as you may think. It's about maybe half an inch of padding beneath it, but the overall weight of the headset is really rather light. It's definitely less than 275 grams, which is fantastic work. They've done that just by reducing the sheer amount of materials on it. Now with the padding being a bit lackluster, you'd assume that these are going to be quite uncomfortable, but they're really not. The clamping force is such that it will keep this propped to the side of your head. So a lot of that weight bearing is going against the actual force of compression to your head, which sounds really bad, but they're not. They're very, very comfortable. And the reason for that comfort on the ear cups themselves, you do get a very nice, generous amount of padding there itself, but, but they are perfectly round, which does feel a little awkward after using gaming headsets for as long as I have. And on the inside of that, there is a very generous amount of padding over the driver itself. So your ears do go on the inside, but they're met with a mat of comfort. All very, very lovely. I do like that completely. Now there's no controls on this, because these are just simply a pair of headphones, and that's it. You might notice on the side, where you get this grill pattern and the branding, the DT990 Pro, all silver and pronounced for you to make you look very posh, like you know what you're doing. You'll also see this little bit. This is not part of the design. I've been using these as a gaming headset, and that's for the mod mic. It's as simple as that. I will touch on the mod mic when we get to the audio test, just to go over the additional expense that you would need. Now, these things are nice. They do have the exposed wire, which does worry me now and again, but if you do take care, they should be fine. There should be no issues. I can understand why they don't want this cable replacing. It's a thick boy. It really is. You can tell that they've spec'd this out perfectly for these headphones and don't necessarily want you adjusting them. But there we are. They're very nicely built. They're very well put together. It does give the left and right indicator. You do get a bit of play on the Y axis, there, as you can see, which is down to the two little oversized holes at the bottom of these collars for the headband itself that do allow a degree of turning. And you also get on the x-axis. Nice to size to your head, all very lovely. Now I did mention comfort. As I said, it does feel rather strange having the round ear cups over the top of your head. They seem to envelop your entire ear, but it feels okay after a little while. You do get used to it and these are okay for long sessions. Five or six hours gaming, Probably not. You do get a lot of heat buildup underneath the leather head strap and you do start to feel a lot of warmth around your ears. Three hours, four hours, maybe, but you do now and again have to take these off just to give your face a bit of a rub, especially when it's even mildly warm. Other than that, everything about this is lovely. 
It's very well basic design, there's no getting away from that. The standard earphone design, because these are earphones, it's as simple as that. And they're very light, which is all very good. And you will look classy when you have the 990 Pro moniker. Visible for everyone but yourself. But there we are, let's move on. Now in terms of the audio for these headphones, and they are headphones, I do want to come at this from an angle of a gamer, as opposed to someone just listening to music. Obviously they are pretty good for music. Now, there's a couple of standout things about these headphones that you should be aware of in terms of the audio. The first being that these are 250 ohms. Now I'm not going to go massively into what impedance is with headphones, but that's quite a lot. The generic level, I suppose, for gaming headsets is around 30 ohms, and that's predominantly because people like to listen to music when they're on the go and they're using battery power to actually drive the drivers. Now, the second important feature of these is that they're open back. Now, I'm sure most people have some sort of kind of knowledge of the difference between open back and closed back. And if you're in the camp of thinking that this makes the audio sound very broad and the sound stage very wide, you're absolutely correct. That's exactly what these do. But let's have a quick chat about the impedance. Now, if you're gonna use these on console, the first thing I can say is don't. The moment you plug this cable into the back of the control pad, which is only driven by two AA batteries or the equivalent of, you're definitely not gonna be able to push enough power through these in terms of the impedance itself. So they will work, but you definitely won't get your full sort of experience. You won't have the headphones hit their full potential with such low power. Now, when I tested these on PC, I did this in a couple of ways. First way was to go straight into the front panel audio, which I did, and they sounded fine. They really did, they were okay. I then tried plugging it in directly to the motherboard at the back of the computer. Now for point of interest, the motherboard I'm using is an Aorus Master and it's X570 and does have an inbuilt sound card, which is great. And there was a noticeable difference between front panel audio to then using motherboard onboard audio. There was a definite improvement there. I then tried using a little USB audio interface. I used the UMC22 from Behringer. It was about $30, something along those lines. And there was a definite marked improvement once again. But at that stage, you're already at 120 USD for the headphones. You then another 30 USD for the actual audio interface itself, which puts you at 150, which is in the realms of the V2 Pro, for instance, or the Artist 9, or even the Corsair Virtuoso, the original one. That's where these would be at. And we don't have a microphone yet. So you can see where this is going. In order to get the best out of these, you're gonna be spending more and more money. If you're just buying these to listen to music through your amplifier, they're great. But let's have a look at the open back bit now. If you're in the camp that really loves rumbly bass on the side of your head, open back's probably not for you. The bass is definitely there, but it's in the background. Now, if you were driving that song through speakers, you'd feel the bass, but you don't feel any sort of rattle to the head. There's very low distortion, all of the things like that. And it is very nice for listening to music. Where these excel is in mastering music. So if you're someone at home that has a little home studio where you do like to make music, these would be great for you, especially mastering. The sound stage is so broad that you can pinpoint individual sounds, which is all very lovely. When you're gaming, however, and there are lots of cracks, lots of bangs, lots of explosions, they become remarkably fatiguing after only two or three hours. They really do. That started to get to me quite a bit. Now you can go on your PC and you can probably install some sort of audio software and adjust this yourself. I'm sure that you could, and I'm sure you could make it better for you personally. Because if you do want to add a mic to this, like I have, like you can see a little clip here for the, uh, where are you? The mod mic. Absolutely beautiful little piece of equipment, but it's 50 quid and that's for the wired version. At which point this is now 200 pound for the setup as it is. You also have a lot of very, very inconvenient wires. Now don't get me wrong, audio sounds better over the wire. It probably always will. I can't see a time where the bandwidth of the audio information is so vast that you would have to use wireless in order to overcome resistance of the wire itself. That's not gonna be a thing. But it's very inconvenient. It really, really is. When you've got two sets of wires traipsing everywhere, one of which is connected to your PC and one of which is connected to the audio interface, it becomes rather tiresome itself, having that lack of convenience. But they do sound very, very good. Now, would I recommend these? Now, in terms of gaming, no, I probably wouldn't. When you're approaching 200 quid, don't get me wrong, you'll get a great sounding mic, of course you will, it's a mod mic, they sound outstanding, and you'll get very good audio, but you will get a lot of fatigue. That absolutely will happen. And at 200 pounds, Black Friday's coming, everyone. At that price, or rather around that price mark, you're looking at the Arctis Pros on Black Friday. You're looking at the Astro A50s on Black Friday. I did, last year, 200 pound. I would prefer them for gaming to this. But there we are, everyone. I hope you did enjoy the video. I'm sorry I've not done any kind of mic test, but I'm gonna do a standalone video for the mod mic at some point, because it is rather impressive. But yeah, there we are. 
Now, I will have a link to these in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. I will get a kickback should you purchase anything via that link, which is all very nice, but it does go back into the channel. But thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up. If you're, if you're not subscribed and want to see more content like this, then feel free to just uh, click that button just down there. But I hope you have a wonderful morning, evening, noon, wherever you are in the world. Goodbye.